All right, guys, um, we're going to start with a lecture. This is for my English uh, 100 W70 uh, spring class. <clears throat> Again, this, you know, what I wanted to do today is I wanted to um, review for the TSI exam, cover some of the questions on the mock exam, and discuss the five paragraph uh, paper with you or essay with you, or what you should be doing for the TSI exam. Um, the assignment that I had, um, that I had assigned, uh, was to do the developmental English pretest uh, exam that was found under the assigned readings tab. Uh, I wanted you guys to do to write the answers on a separate sheet of paper. Uh, we're we're not going to cover the whole exam, but I'm going to go over some um, some questions with you. Uh, the other thing that I'm going to do is, uh, since I'm not going to cover the whole exam with you, I am going to post the answer or the key, the answer key for uh, the exam that you took. And it's going to look like this. All right, so here we have the whole answer key. Um, and either you can look at it here on the video and kind of pause it and check the answers yourself. Uh, or, like I said, I'll, I'll go ahead and post this on the uh, assigned readings page so that you guys have access to it. All right. So uh, with that in mind, let's go ahead and get started and go over some of the questions. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm doing this in class right now because I'm not going to be able to do it um, later. I'm just going to be collecting papers from you guys today. Uh, so let's go ahead and do this. It's my second time kind of doing this video because the first time it didn't work. All right. So here we have part one and part one is, this, is telling us to uh, that there's a problem with the punctuation and grammar. So we have to um, examine the best version of the bold part of the sentence. Um, the first choice is the same as the original sentence. So if, you, if, if we think that the original um, sentence or the original uh, choice is the best one, then that's going to be our answer. So let's do number one, or let's do a few of these. Uh, number one here we have, I had no money, comma, therefore, comma, I could not go to the movies. Um, what I like to do with these particular um questions is I like to eliminate the ones that I know for sure are not the correct answer. All right. So uh, given that um, or with that in mind, let's look at letter A here. And again, letter A doesn't change. You know, essentially, it's the same same thing, right? That we have I had no money, comma, therefore, comma. So let's let's say that this doesn't work. For example, let's just scratch out A. <clears throat> let's look at B. I had no money, therefore, comma, I couldn't go to the movies. I had no money, therefore, comma, I couldn't go to the movies. You know, I think there still needs some sort of, you know, some sort of pause between money, but we need to find out what the correct punctuation on that is. I had no money, and there has to be something there, right? Now, they give us a comma, but we're looking at other choices here. So letter C, I had no money semicolon therefore i couldn't go to the movies all right now what you need to remember about semicolons which are these right here or that little at the end there <clears throat> the little two dots the semicolon is that a semicolon separates two independent clauses in other words think about the semicolon sort of like a period where it's separating two complete sentences all right so in this case, the semicolon or the sentence, I had no money, I had no money, therefore, semicolon, or I, I should say I had no money, semicolon, therefore I couldn't go to the movies, makes sense, right? Because it's two complete sentences. Now I know some of you guys probably got, you know, probably put A and put a comma, but we need to make sure that we remember this particular rule of the semicolon as, an ind as two independent clauses, as separating two independent clauses. So here, letter C would be the right answer. Again, think of the semicolon as sort of a period. I had no money makes sense. That's a complete sentence. And it's separated, a semicolon, it's separated by a semicolon which acts as a period. Therefore, I couldn't go to the movies and is again is a separate clause. So number one is letter C. <clears throat> number two, the history lecture was boring. I sat through it. Now, 
Number two is pretty easy because, you know, we can just read it and and even looking at it, just it's it's not right. We can we can tell that there's something wrong with it. You know, instead of the comma sounds, it looks like actually it should have a period. So let's look at the rest of it. The history lecture was boring, period. I sat through it. Now, if we have a period, which we do in letter D, then that should automatically be our, our answer. All of the rest of them just don't make sense or wouldn't make sense. Even though, you know, like I said, they're giving us the option. They're just kind of trying to trick us you know, pretty much. So number three, let's look at three. Two is pretty, pretty easy. Trying to find the owner of the lost dog. Now, even again, this is one of those questions that even reading it, we can tell that it's not, you know, that there's something wrong with it. So let's look at our options. Trying to find the owner of the lost dog. Try to find the owner of the lost dog. You know, letter B might make sense, but you know, we're trying to look for the best one. To try to find the owner of the lost dog. It's not a complete sentence, right? So it's gonna have to be either B or D. I was trying to find the owner of the last dog. So obviously letter D makes the most sense there. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's go on. Let's look at some other ones. Let's look at, let's look at number four here. All right. So this one's talking about SeaWorld. Um, so we're going to read it. I like to visit SeaWorld. For example, the sea lion exhibit. So let's look at our first option is the same, right? Nothing changes with letter A. Uh, letter B, I like to visit SeaWorld, comma, for example, the sea lion exhibit. Well, we're gonna have to put a question mark on letter B because, you know, letter B works. But let's see number C, letter or C here. I like to visit SeaWorld. Here we have again the, um, the semicolon. For example, the sea lion exhibit. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to put a question mark there also because that might you know that sounds like it could be the, the right answer. And letter D, let's look at letter D. I like to visit Sea World. For example, comma the sea lion exhibit. I like to visit Sea World. For example, the sea lion exhibit. Well, letter D doesn't work because the sea lion exhibit. You know, if it would have had if it would have had a a semicolon it probably would have worked but it doesn't have that so it's going to come down to letter b and c when we have to choose between a semicolon and a comma for this the best choice is going to be letter b all right so let's look at number five here we bought some food for the weekend so we really don't need to eat out much all right <clears throat> again the first one you know they they're not they're not uh, making any type of changes or anything like that. So uh, let's look at the second choice, B. Uh, we bought some food for the weekend, comma, so we don't need to eat out much. Well, I would put a question mark there because it you know, kind of makes sense there. We bought some food for the weekend, semicolon, so we don't need to eat out much. So we don't need to eat out much. It's not quite the semicolon. It's not quite an independent clause. The second one. It's not a complete sentence. So I would even go on as to say that you know C would we would eliminate C. And the colon, and one of the rules for the colon is colons we don't really we don't really use with this type of punctuation. The only times that we use colons are to write a list. Uh, for example, um, something like this. Uh, no, they don't use one here. Oh, right here. So, look at the, the colon here. It says your sentence skills will be tested in three ways, colon. That's one way to that we would use colons is whenever we're going to give you some sort of list. Uh, the, other, the other way that we use colons is whenever we're going to introduce some sort of quote. And I do this a lot whenever I'm whenever I'm introducing quotes or whenever um, I'm listing it in an essay. I would say, in Diaz's article, she explains the following, and I put a semicolon or a colon, I should say. That's the only time that we really use colons. So we wouldn't do that in this example. 
Again, we wouldn't we wouldn't use a colon, so letter D is out of the question. All right, so it's either going to come down to letter B or C, and again, the best choice for this would be the comma, right? Letter B. So, again, I hope that you're trying to understand the the only times that we use uh, semicolons. Again, you could check the um, you could check the rule for it on Google. Just type in semicolon, and it'll tell you it's used to separate two independent clauses. You know, one of the things that I've actually told my students is, you know, I really don't use semicolons much whenever I write. You know, as a graduate student, I thought I was using them correctly, and it turns out I wasn't. So, you know, um, the advice they gave me was just get rid of them, just put commas. It's sort of become like cursive, you know, something that, you know, is kind of outdated. We don't really use much anymore. Um, again, when it comes down to choosing maybe a semicolon versus um, a comma, probably go with a comma. More than likely, that's that'll be the best choice. <clears throat> Let's see here. I'm trying to look for some other ones that people had problems with. Uh, very important for you guys to recognize, to know the meaning of of the word two, which is which I have here, number thirteen. All right. So we have two, the number two, and in addition to, t o o o, or t o o, I should say. <clears throat> now the first two normally whenever we're writing a letter we'd say okay so this is to my dear friend um, I wanted to go to the movies she um, uh, he wanted um, she wanted to go out with me something like that then that's when we would use the normal to right the number two is whenever we're saying okay well that I wanted two dozen or I want uh, two bags or you know, it's the where we're using the actual number the word TOO Sort of acts like also or in addition so uh, in a sentence like we could use the the word TOO or two as in They wanted to come to uh, I also I also wanted to go to Right, so then that's where we would use to uh, TOO so let's look at this this particular question number 13 it is easy it is too easy to earn good grades in mr in miss sanchez class it is too easy to earn good grades in miss sanchez class so we can automatically eliminate two because they're not using it as as um as a numerical uh, value right so B is out of the question. D is out of the question, right? Do? It doesn't make any sense. So it's going to come down to letter C and letter A. It is too easy. So the best one here would be letter C. Right? It is too easy. In other words, it's it's too much. That's another example where we could where we use the letter T0 or um, T O O. It's too much pressure, right? It's it's sort of uh, again an, an additional value. Also, um, look it up under um, under Google, and and again, if if you're having problems with that, um, the best choice here is letter C for number thirteen. Uh, the other two, fourteen and fifteen, there. Um, number fourteen. Also, we need to what the TSI is wanting wanting to know is whether or not you know. The difference between there, T H E I R, and there, as in location, T H E R E, and um, they are. All right, so number 14, there, when you're talking about T H E I R, um, you're talking about, okay, well, it's theirs, you know, uh, or they're going to the movies. Uh, normally, it's talking about you know people or um, ownership, something having to do with ownership. Um, that's when we would use T H E I R. T H E R E. We normally use that to say, well, it's over there, as in kind of a place or a location. Um, um, you can find the truck stop over there. In other words, it's sort of like you're pointing there. And that's when we would use T-H-E-R-E. Uh, they are, 
um, T-H-E-R-E, -E. let's look at that one real quick, I actually have parallelism here, T-H-E-Y apostrophe R-E is a contraction, all right, and really it's just short for they are, okay, that one's pretty easy, you just, it's just T-H-E-Y apostrophe R-E. So let's look at number 13. It is easy to earn good grades in Miss Sanchez's class. Oh no, we already did that one. It is too easy, right? Number 14. If there were proper tools, we could finish remodeling the den. Now, they're not talking about people here. They're talking about tools. So A would be out of the question, right? If there were, now here we're talking about location. So this one might work, right? Now letter C is not gonna work because if, you, if we say if they are, if they are were proper tools, that just doesn't make sense. And the last one, letter D, if dare were proper tools, no, no, that's, you know, we're not, that, that doesn't make any sense either. So letter B is a correct choice for number 14. So you need to make sure that you know the difference between there, T-H-E-I-R, T-H-E-R-E, and T-H-E-Y, apostrophe R-E. All right. Uh, the same thing with two and lastly, your. Number 15, if you're going to the store, please bring me some milk, all right? Now, here, your, normally, Y-O-U-R, you, you use uh, use a lot for, well, it's um, it's yours, you know, uh, you're going to the store, uh, you're going to see grandma, Y-O-U-R works for that. Now, uh, again, this one is a contraction, you, you are, uh, if we're spelling it Y-O-U apostrophe R-E, then that means you are, right? Uh, your, this one looks like it's just spelled wrong, Y-O-R-E, and then you is just, right, we'll see if it works. If not, you know, we have to choose a different option for number 15. If you're going to the store, please bring me some milk. Now, this one doesn't work. Your doesn't work here. This particular one, Y O U R, right? Um, the best one here would be the contraction. If if we read it as you are, if you are going to the store, please bring me some milk, and that's the best choice. Letter B. All right. So let's go ahead and move on to part two. And let's look at number sixteen here real quick. And in this one, we have to read the sentence. We have to read the sentence and um, what they want us to do is rewrite the beginning um, with kind of, and it has to read just like the, the, the beginning, number 16. Lori and Letty are sisters, they act completely opposite. We have to rewrite the beginning with Lori and Letty act completely differently and then the next word. So we have to read that first and then the options that they give us. So number 16, let's look at 16. Uh, Lori and Letty act completely different. Option A, because they are sisters. Yeah, it sounds kind of weird. So let's let's read the second one. Lori and Letty act completely different, comma, or they are sisters. Again, I would probably say discount A and B already. Lori and Letty act completely different when they are sisters. Again, letter C is kind of it just reads weird. Weird. You know, as opposed to when they're not sisters, they're always sisters, right? So letter C doesn't make any sense. Lori and Letty act completely different, comma, yet they are sisters. That one makes the most sense. So letter D would be the correct answer for number 16. All right. Uh, let's look at uh, number 17 here. Since I did not study for my final exam, comma, I most likely will fail the course. All right. So let's see what options... They give us for number for number 17 rewrite the beginning with i did not study for i did not study for my final exam i most likely will fail the course now this one doesn't have any pauses in between right because it doesn't have any punctuation so it kind of sounds like robotic almost so i'm gonna say you know maybe discount a for right now i did not study for my final exam comma i most likely will fail the course i would put a question mark on that one that doesn't seem all you know too bad it kind of you know uh, logistically makes sense uh, i did not study for my exam or my final exam uh semicolon i most likely will fail the course 
Now this one also I would put a, a question mark because this one also works. Let's do, let's see the, the last one. I did not study for my final exam. I most likely will fail the course. So far A, B, and D kind of, or I'm sorry, A and D probably are, are we could discount because they, you know, they're trying to do too much. They're putting punct too many punctuations or not enough punctuations as in uh, letter A. So we have to look at whether it's B or C. Now this one you could you might be confused because you know some of you guys may have put B or most of you guys would have put B. You try to separate it with a comma. But here we have there is one of those special circumstances where we have two independent clauses. I did not study for my final exam. That's sort of like a that's a sentence right there. That's one clause, right? And it's separated by a semicolon which is the right rule. It's the correct rule. I most likely will fail the course is another separate clause. So for number 17, letter C is a correct answer, right? Separating them by two separate clauses. Now don't get too mixed up. This is the only time where you're actually gonna, gonna, gonna see this sort of stuff. So as long as you have two separate sentences that make sense, the semicolon will work. So think of, again, think about the semicolon as, as a period, as a punctuation, all right? Um, let's see number uh, number eighteen. I'll oh, skip eighteen and see if I have any other ones here that people had problems with. I think twenty. Um, we can we can skip these. I kind of want to get to the last part of this. Uh, and again, if you guys have questions on any one of these, you can you know let me know and I'll try to answer it for you. Um, this part right here is the one I wanted to cover. Uh, part three, where they're talking about uh, all the errors that this uh, paragraph has. Um, now, what I was telling most of my students is, you know, the most common errors that that you have or that students are should be able to recognize are sentence fragments, run-ons. Um, if you know those two, you should be able to do most of these, but, uh, but let's look at this here again. Um, uh, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it, it is nice for you to go over the you know, whole thing. If you have time, a clerk who works in a computerized office was complaining to me the other day about how impersonal his workplace has become. So they're talking about a clerk in their office. That's pretty much the context of this. So let's look at number 26 and we'll try to figure it out as we go. It says, it's just not the same, he insisted, comma, as it was before them put in all the new systems. Well, this doesn't make sense. Now, there's one word that's throwing it off, and I don't know if you'd be able to see it, but the word the word that's, that's throwing everything off is the word them. It's just not the same, he insisted, as it was before them as it was before they put in all the new systems. And that should be the, the, the proper word, they. Now, if you know what them, they, he, she, it, those things are, those are proper uh, pronouns, I should say, or not proper, but regular pronouns. So again, they, them, their, him, she, it, those are all pronouns and you can you can find a list on Google just go ahead and type in they they are just the word pronoun and it'll give you all kinds of ones so this was pretty easy then right because it's error in pronoun reference right they're they're meaning to say they instead of them right uh, so again you know that's one of the ones that's a little bit you know that you should look out for uh, if, if you see he, she, or where they're not using that, make sure that you recognize that that's a, pro, that's a pronoun. Uh, let's look at number 27. One of the things that really bothers him be the computer terminal on which he has to type his figures. You know, so obviously I kind of stress the the B here, right? Because that's the cor that's the incorrect um, that's the incorrect um, word to reference there. One of the one of the things that really bothers him, I should say, that really bothers him is, I should say, the computer terminal on which he has to type his figures. One of the things that really bothers him is the computer terminal. So that one, again, is not it's not a fragment, it's not a run on or splice. It's not an error in pronoun reference because we already use that. 
would be letter D, error in subject verb agreement, right? Doesn't make any sense because we should have put is there, all right? So let's look at number 28. Um, number 28, and what I always like to do is I, I always like to read the sentence before the one that we're doing. He also misses the walls and the shelves he had in his old office. Before the department was reorganized as an open office without poor portions. Now this one should be easy because this doesn't make any sense. Doesn't have a kind of like a subject area, even though we kind of know it's it's an office. Before the department was reorganized as an open office without partitions. Um, obviously doesn't make sense because before it starts with before. Now if we didn't have before, it would read the department was reorganized as an open office. Well, then that makes better sense, right? But again, here we're 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 gonna we need to notice that this is a sentence fragment. It's not a whole complete sentence. All right, number twenty nine. Now he feels that he doesn't have any place to put his trophies and his pictures of his family. He feels vulnerable in the open areas where everyone can see him. Now this one, this one is gonna be a run on in comma splice. And the reason that we'll know this is because obviously they're trying to use commas. They're trying to put commas where they should have periods and it's leading to a run on sentence. Normally you'll have a run on sentence and you know, some students will have run on sentences whenever, you know, they, they don't put any punctuation. They just keep going and going and going and trying to separate everything with commas. That's sort of what's happening with, um, with number 29. All right, so you need to make sure that you recognize this. All right, the last one is an error in parallelism. And let me, let me talk a little bit about error in parallelism and kind of to, to show you or give you examples of error in parallelism. <clears throat> the definition parallelism is used, is the use of components in a sentence that are grammatically the same or similar in their construction. So think about a list that you would make again for like spaghetti, right? You would say, well, for spaghetti, I need noodles, I need Parmesan cheese, I need tomato sauce. All of these things are sort of components, um, even grammatically, that are similar to each other because we're trying to make spaghetti, right? So here we have some examples of common parallelisms. So I, made, I made sure to kind of look for some here. Like father, like son, that's a common like, thing that you know people say. Uh, the escape prisoner was wanted dead or alive. Right, uh, easy come, easy go. Whether in class or at work or at home, Shasta was always busy. Uh, flying is fast, comfortable, and safe. Um, these are parallel to each other, right? And when you're talking about flying is fast, comfortable, and safe, all of them are referring to flying. So um, again, these are examples of parallelisms. So in the exam, we can see that the parallelism number 30 is where they're talking about the office the new office may be more streamlined and with more efficiency but sometimes it's definitely missing perhaps the feeling that it is a place where people can be people so again there is an error in parallelism because that they're they should be they're talking about being streamlined and efficient right but at the end the error is that there is a feeling that, that it's where people can be people. It has nothing to do with being streamlined and efficient. So again, there is an error in parallelism there. All right. So hopefully this helped. Again, like I said, I'll post up the, um, the key uh, in the assigned readings page so that you can reference that. Uh, the last thing that I wanted to talk about is your TSI exam and, <clears throat> or your writing exam. And essentially, this is what you should be doing for your TSI uh, writing writing test. Um, what you should be doing, or the way to actually hustle this particular test, is you need to make sure that you're writing 600 plus words, 600 to 800 words. For the TSI exam, for some reason or another, they want they want us to write. The more that you write, the better kind of grade that you're going to get. Make sure that you have a thesis. Make sure that you know, you're making some sort of argument and that your following paragraphs are intended to support your thesis, All right? So we should be writing a five paragraph essay. Um, and 
in the subsequent paragraphs, you know, with your intro paragraph, you should be just stating what your thesis is. Um, you should be saying either you agree, disagree, and that you're going to kind of give you examples to support your, you know, your decision pretty much. Uh, the rest of the paragraphs for, uh, the rest of your four paragraphs are intended to be used as support or as evidence. Now, one of the things that you want to do for this exam is not only have all of these things, making sure that you, you know, have enough to write, making sure you have a thesis, support your argument, is I want you guys to use transitional phrases. And normally for my, for my, um, for my um, essays, the ones that you do for my class, I don't ne necessarily want you to use transitional devices, but for the TSI, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and say use them because this is what they're looking for, and I'll go over some of these transitions with you in a bit, and you can find these transitional uh, devices in the assigned readings uh, tab. So let's go back to the computer, and. I'm going to go ahead and escape. And under the assigned reading tab, if you notice, I have a couple of pictures way at the bottom uh, below Hemingway. We have transitional phrases. And here we have tra these transitions. And this is uh, this is like a copy that I had made from a book that um, that we were using before. And this is kind of, you know, I, I picked this out because I noticed that this is what they wanted you guys to do for your TSI exam. Um, so whenever you're, you're transitioning, in other words, you write your intro paragraph and you're going to transition into the next paragraph, right? You're going to use words like besides, furthermore, similarly, in addition, again, right? These are transition that, that indicate in addition as well. Uh, you might also use in the next paragraph, one instance is, or, or to illustrate, for instance, you would start off your paragraph with, with these transitional devices right? Just to show that you're transitioning into a separate idea or a separate subject matter. So make sure that whenever you write your essay, that you're separating each paragraph with the ideas or with the subject matters that you're wanting to write. And to begin them, you want to make sure that you're using a transitional device or a transitional phrase. All right, this is a really good one to cite an example. Maybe if, maybe you could use that at the beginning of your third paragraph, all right? So all of these, you want to make sure to find or to go over them and see if you can fit them into your paper somehow, all right? That's why I put them up. Um, like I said, I mean, I really don't, you know, for my paper, I would say don't use these because, you know, these, you know, this is sort of like high school. This is sort of like the way high school students still write. But here are some transitions that you would use at the end, maybe, of your of your paper. Finally, ultimately, and in conclusion, therefore, thus. Um, to emphasize, really good. I kind of, you know, I, I dig that. Whenever you're, you know, you're using that, whenever you're trying to um, support a claim, you want to say, well, to emphasize, I want to um, point at, etc. Kind of something, right? Um, so again, I have these transitional devices you know, under the assigned readings page so that you can go in and look at them before you take your exam and make sure that you use them whenever you're writing your, your essay. All right, here's some more. All right, here we have now, then, meanwhile, before, next, next week. Um, however, although, nor, in contrast, and again, there, are, you, you could use any one of these at any time in your, in your essay. And I think the more that you have of these transitional devices in your essay, the better that you'll do. Now, in your essay, if you get if you get a seven or above, I think that you pass the whole thing. So whether or not you pass the grammatical part, the one that we just went over, if you do well enough in your essay, in your TSI essay, it exempts you from that other one, from that other exam that you took. You know. So again, to reiterate, I want to come back and just tell you make sure that you're doing the 600 plus words. Make sure that you're writing enough. Make sure that you're doing your thesis, support, five paragraphs, and use transitions, all right? Use the transitions that are listed on the assigned readings page. 
Okay, so given this, you know, given all this information, you should be able to pass this exam. Uh, so take some time out of your day to, to, to look at these. Um, make sure that, you know, that you're trying to, you're, that you're doing your best pretty much on these. And, and, and whenever you're doing your writing exam, you know, you want to keep track of the time. Uh, I know that sometimes you might, you know, your mind might go blank at the beginning. You don't know what to write. Uh, I would say just start typing, start typing, 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 typing. Uh, once you get to about 15, maybe 20 minutes left in your, in your exam, uh, start making sure that your paragraphs, that every, that, that you're ending the way that you want to end, that all of your spelling, you're going back and revising your spelling, making sure that your sentences are clear um, and simplified, uh, making, sh making sure that, uh, that they're easy to read. Um, so take some time with it again, you know, but you don't want to, you don't want to just be staring at your screen for 20 minutes without actually typing anything. You want to make sure that you begin immediately once you have the, uh, the ability to start with your essay. Read the prompt, try to understand if you need to take down some notes, some side notes, um, you know, type them out, uh, but don't take too much time. Make sure that you know uh, your time limit. Uh, make sure that, uh, make sure also that they're not skimping out on the time. You know, if they give you two hours, make sure that it's two hours, all right? So um, that's really all I have for this uh, for this discussion, and I hope that uh, I you know that you did good in your TSI exam. Um, check your transitional phrases. Again, we won't we won't be meeting on Thursday. I'll make sure that I post this on the blog. Um, since we are since you guys are taking the uh, the TSI exam, we won't be meeting on Thursday. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. I will be posting this video uh, tonight, so uh, be on the lookout for that. Um, and I guess you guys should be coming in in about 10 minutes. I'll be here to collect your papers, uh, and I will see you next week, okay? All right, great.